Welcome to my channel. The colors for today's painting demonstration. Titanium white, yellow permanent light, yellow deep permanent, pyrrole red, matter lake, ultramarine blue, and phalo blue. I've separated the phalo blue because it's such a powerful color. It can ruin other mixtures if you're not careful. The brand I use, these are water mixable oils from Royal Talons Cobra line. Some other painting equipment that you might want to have. I use flat brushes. These are synthetic flat brushes, brushes made by Princeton. They're the Aspen line. You'll need sizes eight, six, four, and two, and then a rigger uh, brush, which is a size two. You'll need a couple of chip brushes from time to time. This is a two inch and a one inch. We will not be using everything today, but uh, this is the standard equipment I use. You may want a small spray bottle filled with water. You could also use a collapsible water pot. And you might also want a squeegee. We're not going to use this one today, but the Atoro uh, squeegee is um, a tool that I've seen other artists use, and from time to time I use it myself. So you might want to add this particular instrument to your regiment. All right, let's get started today. We're going to do a simple landscape painting to give you some ideas for how to make um, an impressionistic painting from your imagination look very realistic. So I'm starting with my dark, which is a mixture of ultramarine blue, as well as uh, Matter Lake. This will create a very dark purple, which will actually be darker than black, but at the same time having some color tone. Uh, this is a number six brush, I do believe. <clears throat> Uh, the surface I'm using today is an 11 by 14. This is a, a canvas panel. It's been toned with some yellow oxide earlier and left to completely dry. This just means that I, I'm not painting on a, a white surface. Here I'm just developing the darks. These are my large masses. These are the masses of the trees, which will be the darkest part of the painting. <coughs> Keep reminding yourself that in the early stages, the painting is not going to look particularly good until you've had a chance to put various layers of paint on to your canvas. This is a very, um, what do I want to say, a thin mixture of the dark colors that we put on. The only medium I'm using today is just a little bit of water to mix with the paints right out of the tube. Not using any reference uh, material today. We're just going to be painting from a scene from my memory. This is a simple uh, meadow with some trees and we're putting in some darks in the foreground at this point for the the land masses <clears throat> much of this color is going to be covered up with sequent uh, with uh, other layers of paint I'm just trying to once again, vary the brush strokes. Not trying to be fussy at all. And in fact, uh, one of the biggest things you need to get used to is lay down the paint and just leave it alone. Don't try to mess with it too much. This will give you quite a bit of variety and will also lead to loose brush strokes. As you can see, this is a very loose painting at this point. Always good to put some larger shapes near the edges. <coughs> Excuse me. As this keeps the viewer's eyes 
in your painting and not drifting away. I'm drying off my, uh, wiping off that uh, purple color from my brush using um, a shop towel. Those are stronger towels that tend not to leave too much uh, debris behind, and that's one of the reasons I use them. I have an another video on those if you would like to watch those. By the way, this is a good opportunity to remind you that if you like the content that you are receiving from my channel, you could really help me out by subscribing to the channel and give me a thumbs up on the YouTube channel. If you have any comments, that's also helpful, and you can write those below. I attempt to answer all the comments that I receive on these videos. And if you would happen to be interested in purchasing any paintings from me, right now at least, in 2022, I'm selling most of my works on eBay. Simply type David W. Poe in the search engine, and you will find me on the eBay store. Or you can go to my website, which is davidwpoe.org. Now I've mixed up a mixture for the sky. This is ultramarine blue with some titanium white. Once again, using a, a large flat brush. use a little bit more blue on one side of the painting than the other why would you do that that provides a little bit more variety painting good skies is one way to produce some interest and varying what you do with that sometimes you can use um, some clouds other times you can uh, vary the sky with different shades of color. Uh, today that's what we're going to do. We're going to vary the sky with some shades of color. So we're starting with this uh, ultramarine uh, blue and now I'm uh, adding titanium white to produce uh, a lighter shade. And now I'm adding that lighter blue next to the, the blue that I already had. <coughs> I like to apply some of this first and then I'll let it set up a little bit and then I will actually go back later on in the painting process and deal with softening these edges between these two obviously different tones of blue. And as you can see with, with paint you can always cut back into some of the layers that you've already added as a way of developing your shapes. Obviously these big purple masses don't look much like trees at this point, but give it time. <clears throat> Varying the brush strokes and a couple of a couple of marks within the tree, the sky holes. And today I'm, I'm actually filling in right up into the other color. Sometimes I will leave a bit of space between the two colors and blend between them. But today I want to get a little bit different effect by, by blending directly into each other. Now uh, on the palette you'll see that uh, with the mixtures I already have I'm adding some yellow. Some permanent yellow medium I believe is what I chose to use and we're going to put this as close to the horizon line as possible so there we go you will notice that it does look a little bit yellow next to the purple and once again I'm not fussing I'm just putting the paint on the canvas well the first task is to get the initial lay in of the shapes and to do that quickly and with as few of brush strokes as possible, and that will make your painting seem loose and effortless. Notice again, not fussing at all. 
I'm going to bring the color right into the other blue. And I'm going to let that set up for a little bit. And then I will come back in and deal with the edges. <clears throat> now, oftentimes, the landmass, now we've got the darks in the foreground. And uh, obviously, we've got the trees. We're going to have this flat surface of green. Uh, for the green mixture, though, I want to also be cognizant of the fact that uh, the sunlight coming from the sky is going to sometimes have an impact on the color that you're going to see on the ground. So, um, in this case, sometimes it's a little bit dark, just slightly darker, uh, because obviously your sky is going to be the lightest value in a painting, and the ground is usually the second on the list, and then the third would be the uh, vertical shapes. <laughs> So here I've mixed up a little bit darker mixture than what we used for the sky color, the, the yellow in the sky. As you can see, it's got a little bit of an orangey touch to it, and that's exactly what I want. Uh, we want to be cognizant also of the fact that uh, a lot of good paintings are made from uh, mixing the primaries so that you can use various shades of green, shades of orange, and of course, shades of of uh, purple. So, so here we go. We're just laying this in. <clears throat> and I want to be careful. I don't want to totally erase the purple, you see. So I'm basically mixing on the palette as I add my brush strokes. And notice I'm not fussing too much with those brush strokes. I'm trying to get them in as quickly as possible, vary the shapes, and um, kind of think about what I'm wanting the landmass to do. Usually as the landmass comes closer to the viewer, there are more details. And I'm trying to present those details by simply varying the strokes of the paint itself. and then allowing that purple to mix in with, with my mixture color here to help produce a little bit different uh, color variety and give you the sense that these shapes are closer to the viewer and therefore more detailed. But once again, it's an illusion of detail is the only thing here that I'm adding is not really foliage or rocks or anything. It's simply shapes. But we will come back and give it a sense of detail later on. Notice too that um, we're about 13 minutes into the live painting and you can tell that I've almost covered the entire canvas now with one layer of paint. And that is really helpful because, um, as you know, I paint a lot outdoors as well with um, a la prima, which is all at once, and plain air, which means outdoor painting. And so if you're going to capture the light, you have to be able to get your values and your shapes in very quickly. And uh, that will help you immensely. Here is a very... Um, very light green tone that uh, sort of matches the orangish tone that I have put in and I'm using that in the foreground to indicate what will hopefully be some some uh, grass masses some 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 foliage of, of grasses and such as we get closer to the viewer and I'm taking a little bit of that and then pulling it straight up with the brush to create the hopefully the illusion of of stalks of grass and, and other things growing in this foreground. Now we're going to just uh, clean my brushes off primarily by, by using a paper towel, the shop towel, to, to remove all of that uh, paint excess from the brush. And then, of course, you can always uh, give it a swirl in your uh, collapsible water, uh, water pool which is uh, what I'm doing off screen is putting a little bit of um, water on that and then uh, cleaning that brush a little bit better 
uh, before I before I put any other colors on there. Um, and now uh, this is a good place after I've put my first layer of paint to go ahead and scrape scrape the palette so that way I can make some more mixtures without without getting those other value shapes. Um, so. And uh, that was a plastic palette, a, a very cheap plastic palette. I usually use a wood one that came with the uh, Maybath easel that I'm using, but I'm trying this uh, plastic one out. It's uh, much easier to kind of manipulate and clean, and there's a slight lip to it, which uh, I was anticipating using a little bit more water uh, for some effects today, but didn't end up using that or doing that. Now I'm uh, cleaning that palette off with, with another uh, paper towel and also beginning to assess what I'm going to be doing as I look at these edges and begin to um, modify the shapes. So this mixture I'm going to make first is going to be a mixture of ultramarine blue and some of the um, yellow deep or permanent yellow uh, permanent yellow deep to create some dark greens which i'm going to put over top of the purple oh i'm probably getting ahead of myself it looks like i'm actually taking uh the sky first and then working downward so here what i'm doing is with a, a flat uh, brush is trying to do some random strokes as you as you can tell to mix this uh, these sky colors that I applied earlier and notice I'm really actually trying as best I can uh, not to control this process too much or uh, and I'm also trying to be conscious of not making the same stroke over and over again I'm pulling some of those colors up I'm um, turning my brush on other parts of it and uh, marrying those two colors together in a way. And now, um, as you can see, it doesn't take much to, to produce a kind of cloudy effect in the sky. All right, so now that I've applied that and I'm happy with it, I'm going to take and pull that color off of my brush again. I'm not going to use any water now to mix with. I'm just going to use the, the dry brush now. Uh, covering up a couple of spots that I've noticed on the top portion. And now I'm going to go in to the, uh, the yellow color in the sky, which is closer to the horizon. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to eliminate the hard edge that you see there almost in the middle of the painting and draw those two colors together as well with some very random brush strokes as I'm softening the transitional colors there uh, just by moving back and forth across across those two planes see how that looks now more of a natural progression I, I like that now going back in and eliminating that, that rough edge. And the same way here around these tree masses. And also intentionally trying to bring out a little bit of that purple into the sky. So notice, uh, we got some basic shapes here, but no one's going to think that we're actually doing a landscape yet. It's kind of ugly still, right? Um, but uh, keep keep watching because we will transform this into the image that you saw on the uh, YouTube thumbnail. Now I'm uh, now I'm mixing that uh, dark green mixture I told you about with some ultramarine blue and some a permanent yellow deep, and then uh, a little bit of the uh, Matter Lake or Pyro Red, it, uh, that red is being mixed into there uh, to get a little bit darker shade. And now we're going to be uh, very uh, liberal in applying uh, the second coat over sections of these purple tree masses. And so we're not going to cover up completely the purple, 
we're going to allow that uh, that dark uh, purple color to uh, to be seen ever so slightly even as we apply the local color and by local color is, is kind of the, the color that that an object is without uh, too much direct light or uh, change of some kind of a light effect so uh, so this green is being uh, placed on the the darkest of the purples as uh, as I had uh, sketched it in and it becomes kind of a map for these these masses now because these uh, trees are, are a fair distance away uh, today I'm not going to labor at putting branches in uh, we're going to go for the effect that uh, we're going to uh, manipulate the eye a little bit and move these images back a little bit further such that it would be understandable why you wouldn't necessarily see individual branches and trunks of trees and such uh, and due to the lighting it's a little bit lower light uh, you're not going to see a lot of that and we, because of the, the the leaves being rather full at this in this particular painting uh, we're going to let that that draw the uh, viewers attention now um, to push some of those back I'm adding a little bit of titanium white to my green mixture which creates a nice gray kind of a grayish green and uh, just with a few little strokes I'm going to uh, create some distance between these um, these trees and the foreground uh, see what I'm saying is so that that definitely looks gray on your screen it actually has a little bit of a greenish tint to it and that's what I want to give the uh, the viewer the idea that there might be a, a little bit of a mountain range or a hill back there and that uh, this this uh, outcropping has some trees perhaps growing on it as well. I'm going to pop in a little bit of that same color uh, in between those two uh, trees and uh, extend that uh, even even between that uh, those two trees near the edge. All right, now I'm going to be pulling that paint off of the brush again. And I believe at this point, since I'm working kind of from the very top of the picture down, I'm going to be mixing a lighter green using ultramarine blue and then the um, permanent yellow light. Yes, there we go. I'm getting the, the permanent yellow light and uh, mixing that into my uh, previous uh, puddle of color as you can see there and that oftentimes helps you to establish the value and also the tone and so now i'm going to start putting a few of these into the tree colors just at the tops where the sun is reflecting uh, the most on them if you've ever noticed a tree, oftentimes, right, the tops of the trees uh, will get more sunlight than, than the base of the trees where the trunk and the uh, thicker branches are. And so that's what we're striving to do here with this imaginative landscape uh, painting. And notice how abstract these shapes are right now. But like I told you at the very beginning of this video, uh, by the time we're finished, uh, my hope is that you will think that uh, the picture is, is very realistic. And here we go, just blending these colors together on the panel itself. That's a, another way to, to think about painting. As I pop in some of uh, the colors that would be present as the sunlight is coming uh, down upon these uh, tree structures and then trying to soften some of those edges in the in the process purple is nice because it's also blending into it
giving it some of what what we might call randomness that you find in nature. And here once again I'm going back in and and uh, lightening the edges of those those colors that I've placed into the painting. And hopefully in doing so that creates a once again a sense of uh, realism. And with the top of the trees again lightening that that color ever so slightly with with a kind of an olive green and then I'm um, trying to suggest a few branches that are um, on the outskirts of some of these tree forms just by touching the canvas a little bit now I'm, I can't say that I'm totally happy with these tree masses yet but I will be going back in and cleaning them up here later. I'm also noticing a, a need for a little bit more orange. And in just a minute, I'll be uh, mixing up some oranges to give further definition to the land masses that are just underneath the trees. And here, just trying to, once again, work on a couple of those edges to set the painting back a little bit in that one section that you see. Once again, going back over some of the highlights of the light onto the tree. Hopefully without getting too fussy with the shapes and the changing color transitions. Of course the light doesn't just stay on one area, it also um, reflects a little bit different and notice that I'm not really changing the color on my brush I'm just allowing uh, some of the colors that are already there to further mix into each other uh, suggesting some some variations uh, caused from the uh, reflections from the light source the light the sun rather and then um, randomly placing some marks and then attempting to wipe away some of the edges so that the shapes don't appear too mechanical. So I'm relatively happy with, with how those uh, tree shapes are coming along. I'm going to take a look at this other side and uh, do the same, painting up in with some of the colors that are already on the, the uh, panel and connecting them with, with some different uh, random shapes on the top of the tree as well. And now I'm, I'm noticing that the, um, the sunshine in the back of the painting looks good, but I want a little bit more orange in the, uh, the floor section, if you would, of the painting. So now I'm taking a little bit more titanium white and mixing it in with those green colors that were already on the palette to produce a sort of uh, sandy color. And now I'm adding some permanent yellow light to this mixture. Shifting it to a, a, grayed, a grayed down version of yellow. Sorry. And then I'm just using a few strokes in the back to, to suggest a few additional shapes, maybe a bank there by the trees. 
giving me a sense of illusion and detail, Vary, varying the strokes of this uh, ground plane near the base of these trees. Also um, kind of suggesting that the sun is, is still shining down on these areas in the picture. But uh, clearly there's some areas that I want to continue to leave in shadow uh, for the sake of contrast. And once again, we're moving down the painting and suggesting details by primarily our brush strokes and the color mixtures. All right, now we're going to concentrate more on the foreground and creating just enough detail, we hope, that you will be able to fill in some things that aren't even there. Now I'm uh, making sure to shift this pile uh, to a, a green. In this lighter green, I'm putting on the ground plane and suggesting some nuances to the uh, to the vegetation and, and ground that we as viewers see. Varying my strokes now as we get closer to the foreground, uh, the brush strokes are going to get bigger and more varied to suggest uh, foliage. And notice how I'm using some of the colors that I laid down previously as some accent colors to create that contrast between dark, at least darker, and lighter colors on the painting itself. Now I'll just uh, take and make sure to get the excess paint off of there, especially if we're going from uh, a little bit darker color to a little bit lighter color or vice versa. Here another mixture of green, slightly darker, with some yellow uh, permanent deep and some yellow permanent light, as well as a little touch of ultramarine blue. And you see that, that that produces an even greener green. And then just picking some, some areas to, to pop in this color as we come to the foreground and hopefully now you're you're beginning to see the land the landscape take shape that the colors are appearing more realistic and just with some varied brush strokes here in the foreground we're creating some texture and some vegetation and your eye is starting to produce the details without me having to actually paint them in with a small brush. Here just suggesting more grasses that would be growing to a little bit taller length than what we would have in the uh, distant landmass. As I'm painting this I'm almost noticing that in the one corner it it kind of looks like water but um, uh, might have been a nice effect to have left it uh, kind of a, a greenish blue, but but uh, in this case we're going to paint over that and uh, lose the uh, illusion of any kind of water in this foreground. So it's just uh, various grasses that are growing here 
So I'm coming back in with some darker greens at the very, very base of this uh, section of the painting. Once again, uh, I can judge my values by, by mixing into the pools of color rather than needing to have a separate pool of color for, for every color mixture. Best to take a couple of the primaries and add to that as you need to and then scrape off and start over when you get to other other sections of the painting if that's if that's called for once again we're tackling this corner and putting in some darker greens Now, if you step back, I think you can see that there's no detail in the foreground, and yet our eye is blending those colors together and creating some detail. I'm adding some, I'm just mixing the purple that's already on the palette a little bit to knock back that um, lighter section of the field so that we kind of create a, a circle design, if you will in terms of how you enter the painting and go around to, to view uh, the land masses and other uh, tree masses that line this uh, well-lit meadow that's in between those larger shapes. Now, just uh, cleaning that brush off again with the shop towel to remove that paint. And pretty soon I'll be mixing another yellow, a little bit brighter yellow. Uh, here we go, I do believe, with some permanent yellow light. And my uh, brush, I'll be turning to a rigger brush soon. And with the rigger brush, I'll be going in and painting just a few strokes to indicate some more detail. Notice I was judging that on the basis of the color uh, the color pool that was already there on the palette. Now taking that lighter color with the rigger brush number two and we're going to randomly put some marks on the canvas indicating that uh, there could well be some daffodils or other other yellow flowers, or maybe uh, strokes of grass that are uh, having the sun reflect a little bit stronger on them than others. And you notice with the rigger brush, I get it moving up and down in a gestural motion from the base of the ferrule, uh, or the tip of the brush rather, and then um, pulling that up and around and uh, allowing uh, different uh, directions to, to be painted onto the uh, canvas panel. There we go. And notice that now it has a sense of life, I do believe. Looks pretty realistically uh, realistic, even though, uh, as you can tell, there's really not much uh, detail in the painting. It's all an imagination looking at these shapes and, and doing that uh, for us. I always sign my uh, paintings with a uh, rubber instrument, so that's what I'm getting ready to do now. I'm taking a step back to make sure that um, there's nothing else that's needed. And there we go. And uh, uh, this time I'm going to, uh, usually I use the right hand side, but this time the left because uh, there's so, uh, the larger tree masses are on the right. And so I think that provides a little bit of balance. Thank you so much for watching this uh, demo and please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you would that would greatly uh, appreciate that thank you so much and uh, hope to see you in the next video